Seven million. That's how many people die every year, according to a rough estimate. And around 17 million new people are born. But if scientists have thoroughly studied physiological changes that follow human birth, it's not entirely clear what happens to a body after death and burial. I'm not talking about religious beliefs regarding the afterlife. I mean chemical and physical processes. In this video, you'll find out how we can reverse death, which human organ is the first to develop and which of them is the first to shut down, and what, in fact, happens to the body after a person dies. This video has been made for educational purposes only. What happens in the first hour after death? Dying means that physiological processes in the cells and tissues irreversibly stop. But even sudden death comes gradually. The first things to fail are breathing and blood flow. Then the brain follows suit. If it continues to function, but the heart stops, that's called clinical death and it's reversible. Researchers think that there are around four minutes between cardiac arrest and the moment when the brain starts getting seriously damaged. During this period, blood flow can be restored through cardiopulmonary resuscitation. If it doesn't help, the so-called biological death comes, and then the body starts to slowly decompose. Within several minutes after the heart stops, the body turns visibly pale. That happens because blood drains away from small vessels, and right around the same time, alga mortis occurs. This is a process of body temperature dropping to the ambient temperature. It falls approximately 16 degrees every hour. At the same time, all muscles relax. The body can no longer retain fluid. Curiously enough, the things that die in an organism faster than anything else are the ones to appear in it earlier than anything else. In the first months of growth, an embryo develops red blood cells, circulatory system, and lungs. However, there is a so-called heart tube that supplants a heart for some time. It beats around 65 times a minute and soon turns into a fully functioning organ, able to pump around 300 liters of blood per hour. But what happens if a heart stands still for more than 60 minutes? What happens in the next 12 hours after the death? Since the heart doesn't pump blood anymore, the force of gravity makes liquids run down to the body parts located closer to the ground. If the human body remains untouched for a couple of hours, purplish red patches can appear on those parts. They resemble bruises caused by localized bleeding. During the first three hours, chemical changes in the body cells cause muscle stiffness. That's called rigor mortis. When it sets in, it affects the muscles of the jaw, neck, and eyelids in the first place. In the next few hours, post-mortem rigidity spreads over the face, then down the chest, abdomen, hands, and legs. And then, it finally reaches fingers and toes. In approximately 12 hours, the muscles reach maximum stiffness. It's hard to move or do anything at all with the limbs of a deceased person. Their knees and elbows can bend only a little, and their fingers and toes can look uncommonly twisted. Almost as twisted and weird as they look in the process of taking shape. When it develops, a fetus has something like tiny kidneys first. And after a while, hands and legs start growing out of them. The muscular system begins to develop in the second month of pregnancy, almost simultaneously with the skeleton. And it turns out that bones and muscles are the organs that last the longest after the owner dies. What happens to a body after it's buried. Right after being placed in the ground, as it is customary to do in most countries, the corpse undergoes a process of mineralization. It breaks down into separate chemical elements and simple chemical compounds. The period of mineralization usually takes from 10 to 30 years. At first, live microorganisms and insects make an active contribution. They eat and process soft tissues. When their job is done, all that is left of the body is a skeleton it crumbles into separate bones. In this state, it can lie in the soil for hundreds and thousands of years, just like teeth. How do people know about this? Thanks to numerous observations. Nowadays, there exist outdoor research facilities known as body farms. There are not a lot of them in the world. Several farms located in the US and one in Australia. In these places, people study what happens to an organism after death. Body farms are also used for conducting experiments to determine how decomposition affects facial features, fingerprints, and at what point it's still possible to reconstruct the DNA. 
It's worth noting that all the mentioned things develop in a different order when it comes to a fetus. At first, facial features appear, a mouth, a nose, and dark circles that later turn into eyes. Then in the third month of pregnancy, the hard tissue surrounding primary teeth is formed, and only after that do the bones start to develop. However, even they can be gone forever if a burial method is not the one we are used to. What happens to a body that wasn't placed in the ground? For a very long time, some nations have practiced alternative burial rituals. As you know, ancient Egyptians were the masters of mummification. This method isn't that popular today, but it's been modernized, and certain cultures continue to opt for it. During mummification, the body undergoes chemical treatments that either stop or slow down the decaying of tissues. When mummified, the corpse can stay preserved for a few thousand years, but only in case the mummy is well protected and safely stored. Meanwhile, the people of Tibet do it the opposite way. They don't hide bodies at all. On the contrary, they bring them to the mountaintop and leave them there. Often the body is dissected, the skin is removed, and then the remains are coated with a mixture of milk, flour, tea, and barley to attract wild animals. It's believed that this way, a human pays their debt to nature. But even if we forget the ancient religious rituals, there are still alternatives to conventional burial. For instance, organ donation. When a person dies, some organs can still function and save someone's life. Or you can donate your body to a research lab. A corpse used for scientific purposes is often called a cadaver, which has a significant medical value. Studying dead bodies has played a considerable part in the progress of medicine, biology, and other related fields. Of course, some people don't want their bodies to be used this way, or don't want them to decay in the ground. There's an option to their liking too, cremation or burning a body. Cremation or burning a body at very high temperatures. The process takes around two hours, and the only thing left in the end is ashes. Dying people often ask for their ashes to be scattered in a particular place. However, these days, people have created even more peculiar ways to preserve this memorable thing. For example, Wiki Somers, a designer, uses ashes to craft her art objects. Her work philosophy emphasizes that even when a person passes away, they still stay with us. Both development and decomposition of the human body are processes carefully planned by nature. But even nature needs more time and resources to create something than to destroy something. And it wouldn't hurt if humans remembered this every time they desired to condemn or ruin a thing brought to life by someone else.